Hello and welcome back to Raised by Giants, where we talk all things spirituality. I'm Ryder Lee. Tonight we have special guest Tony Rod Riggs. But before I introduce him, Raised by Giants is now on Rockfin. If you haven't heard of Rockfin, it is an amazing video platform that actually cares about its creators. You can make a free account over there and watch all of my content and all the other creators content. But what you really want to do is sign up for the premium content, which is far less than a YouTube premium account. And you'll not only get my premium uncensored content when it gets released, but all of the other content creators, premium content as well. Check the links in the description to sign up for the video streaming platform, Rockfin. You'll thank me later. Also, if you would like to make a donation to help the channel grow and produce more content, you can donate on PayPal or buy me a coffee to help support my work. It is 100% completely optional and is the only alternative other than monetizing the channel, which we all know what happens to channels like this when monetization gets involved. And uh, I want to keep this channel. So if you can donate, I'd very much appreciate it. No donation is too small. And thanks to everyone that has donated so far. I appreciate you a lot. Some very generous people in this community. Check the links in the description for donation options. So without further ado, tonight's guest is Tony Rod Riggs. He was abducted from his home in Michigan at the age of 10, went through torturous MK Ultra type training program, was shipped to Peru to do intuitive work and drug running, and then went, then was taken to Seattle where he was owned as a sex slave for a satanic worshiping elite. He was then sold off to the secret space program where he served a short time on Mars as a support soldier for Mars Colony Corp. When the Mars program was canceled, he was traded off to Sirius Colony Corp where he lived for over a decade. He worked on the German ships as well as a repairman and eventually a cargo engineer on interstellar trade missions. After 20 years, he was returned to his bed at the age of 10. Hello and welcome to the show, Tony. It's great to have you on, my friend. How are you doing? Hey, Ryder. I am doing really good. Uh, you know, just listening to that bio, I go, man, I, I, people have got to be listening to that as you read it and go, what? There's no way. You know, like just when I hear somebody else say it, it uh, it's just so much. But, you know, lo and behold, that's kind of what I remembered. and. Um, I wrote my book about it and I worked with some researchers and a lot of things that I remembered I had no business knowing turned out to be true and checked out. So there's actually behind that tall, behind that tall tale of what that bio that you read about what I went through, there's actually a great deal of evidence. Well, I am uh, really looking forward to speaking with you uh, here today. I've been trying to get you on for what seems like over a year now, and our schedules never really uh, lined up, but I'm really glad that you can make it here today because I think for me personally, it's it's really you and a select others that are really credible in this field when it comes to the uh, SSP and you know what's happening and what has happened. And I've listened to a lot of your interviews, Tony, and you've never changed your story as far as I can tell. You've never talked about things that you you know you don't know about, which is another very credible attribute, um, I think anyway. Thank you. Um, there's a lot actually a lot of people have reached out to me. So I I went public in September of 2016 and ever since then a lot of people have reached out and uh let me close some things here. Um, so there's a lot of people that have experienced this as well that just don't talk about it. They don't, they're not, they're not called to speak about it publicly. And, uh, sorry, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You lagged a bit. And so there's actually a lot of people that are very credible, but they just, most of them choose not to speak about it. I've, I've worked with upwards coming up on 3000 people in that time of six years, uh, when I did the math, you know, I kind of in the back of my head kept track of how many people and it's, it's a steady flow. You know, when I get off here with you, I've got another interview tonight, two more tonight. And one of them is with somebody that wants to come forward with information. And, it, uh, you know, it's a common, fairly common phenomenon that people have been taken into these programs and used. And then where it's what it is, is the programs really exploded in 1980. They had funding, black budget funding really exploded. 
and people, they really were aggressively taking people. And what's happened is, so uh, 80, so 40 years later, or yeah, 40 years later, everybody's getting their memories back. And on top of it, the, the information is out there for the public to see. So when people have fragmented, usually it leaves you with a set of fragmented memories uh, being abducted into one of these 20 year programs. And everybody has a few memories that don't make sense. They go, whatever. And then they see my information or somebody else's information that explains it being possible. And they go, whoa, that's what happened. And then more memories come and they, you know, the process begins, you know, the recall process. So that's what we're getting nowadays. It's just, it's just a uh, generational thing. We're getting a lot of people. So people that are taken in the nineties and later on, even 2000 have still have the flashes of memory, but they don't get their memories back because it's not time because there's a, it, it seems to, it seems that the, the uh, memory erasing procedure wears off over time. Uh, so it loses its potency. Is that how you received your memories, uh, Tony? Was uh, the memory uh, blockage uh, wearing off or was it in a different way? Was, was it a regression or an activation? Because from what my understanding, there's a, quite a few ways to receive uh, your memories. How did you receive yours? So I was an oddball. Um, I have not done a hypnotic regression yet, even though I will at some time at some point just to kind of connect those dots because I, because I recommend them to some people and I don't feel right recommending a, pre a procedure as intimate as that without having done it. So I kind of feel, don't feel right. But some people I go, man, the only thing I can think of for you is to like, get a regression. But so I haven't done that. So for me, it was like a perfect storm. And then I don't know if you've heard of Farsight, the Institute, they recently did a, they recently did a remote view of my book and there was a lot of things about that that uh, that pertain to me getting my memory like they like their psychic person went back and helped me to retain or buried the memories deep where I would get them I also had an MRI scan of a couple of weeks before I got the major there was a major event like a recall event and um I wanted to remember I I was madly in love when I was finished the program when they when they took me and put me back home I, I was in love with somebody up there and I didn't want to leave and I didn't want to forget her. And I was um, worked very hard. You know, I kept telling him, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget. So there was, if any one of those things was responsible for my memory, maybe, but it may be the combination of all of them, like a perfect storm is how I got my memories back because it's very rare that somebody remembers as much as I do enough to get a book from A to B. There are people out there that do. And, um, but it's, it's kind of a rare thing. Most people I work with, they only get a handful of memories and they work on it. They do recover more, but they don't get the, you know, nothing like the entire 20 years. And a lot of people do that don't want to talk about it. So what was the first thing that, that you remember that, that you could recall? And when was that? Was that in 2016, whenever you went public or was it before that? No. So the original, the very first, the very first 30 minutes of the abduction. I never forgot. It's like that didn't get erased. Like they didn't erase it. It it did immediately the next day. I remembered the bright lights outside my window, like shining down from above. There was bright lights. And I remember that the very next day, and I went, "Huh?" And but then uh, just a a week, a few weeks later, I remembered the abduction, the actual gray standing over me, and the reptilians that carried me out. Uh, you know, carried me out of bed. They paralyzed me and carried me out of my bed into a big flash. And I kind of vaguely remembered the next few minutes when they were testing me and preparing me for what, what they were going to do. So I always had those memories from, from the start. They were never really erased, but, and they gave me enough to kind of go and search. I was searching for, for what the hell happened to me. You know, I, I didn't understand what happened, but I had those memories. And then later on, as they went, like flying over the geyser at series, I think I was 25 years old, somewhere around there. And I had, I had the memory come back and I went, whoa, because it was in the, it was in a dream. Like it was, I was sleeping and I got the memory back in a vivid dream, but it wasn't a dream because I could remember showering. I could remember riding a train to the ship, to my to my ship i could remember waking up like i remember the whole day in the dream like before and after and dreams don't have that if you know i always say if you're walking on a beach in a dream and you try to remember how you got there you can't because you didn't travel you actually didn't travel there 
this was different. I was dreaming and I could remember how I got there and where I went after and all the whole day. And I, and I thought, when could that have happened? And so the, the, those bits and pieces, these were very detailed, fragmented memories of my time I had throughout my normal life up until the event in 2015, when I, they all made, they all kind of came together. What happened was I saw Randy Kramer explain how time dilation 20 and back works that they can take you and put you back. And I went, Oh my God, they, that's what they did. And then I went, wait a minute. And then I remembered flying over the geyser. Like I said, and I went, that happened. That was real. And then when I accepted it, it was like all the other memories could kind of just, they just flooded through and it was like a breakthrough. And I got chunks and chunks of years of memories and over time. And it wasn't like that, like the memories are there. That's why I love, I always beg people to ask questions. You know, I do Q and A's on my Patreon show and I, I really like these interviews have been the best thing for me because the memories are there, but I just never had a reason to think about them because I'm, I live on earth and I'm so much different than what I lived through. So there's nothing to remind me. And I think that's the, what's going on for a lot of people that have the memories. There's nothing to remind them of being in space because they're on earth. And when you leave your house, you're in a, you're in, you have air and sunlight. And so there's, it's a foreign, we live in a foreign environment compared to what these people are being taken into. And so the memories don't get spawned. The memories are there, but they don't get kicked up until, until they come across the information. Like for me, when I, when people would ask me things in interviews, I go, oh, that's there. And the memory's there. I would have the answer, but I just hadn't been thinking about it until somebody mentioned it. Do you believe that the abduction was uh, still the, the ETs? Uh, still, because you mentioned the greys and the reptilians that were the ones that were abducting you. Uh, do you think that it was actually ETs or do you think it was more of a human group like the military or uh, something of, of that nature? It was a branch of the military with the ETs included, working alongside the ETs on, on bases on the moon and underground. So the same way that the military works with other militaries. So there are places, there are military bases in the world where you'll go and you, you'll find American soldiers working alongside Israeli soldiers, for instance, or Japanese soldiers, for instance. These bases have American soldiers uh, working alongside extraterrestrials. And so these are secret bases. The back of the moon is rife with them. And they're underground. I believe the first place I was taken was an underground base somewhere. And... Um, so there are several, and once once kind of once they get into that classification where they're working with extraterrestrials, there are hundreds of extraterrestrials working together, different species in one of these bases that come and go. And then when you get into space, so my experience from being on Ceres Colony Corporation and working on a ship out there is that around Jupiter, there are actually, you know, trillions of species can access that space, that area of space. And come through flow through it's like a flow point for our galaxy from species from not only all over our galaxy but from all over other galaxies as well it's space travel isn't like star trek or star wars it's actually instantaneous and they can go to other galaxies and back immediately using both artificial uh, wormhole technology and natural wormholes that exist around and that's why it's around jupiter there's there are several portals that are natural that save power output and and can go very far so so I, I don't want to drift too far from the question, but I'm on, I mean, I'm on a rant trying to explain it, but no, no, pretty much no. that's, that's how it's set up. And I believe it's still like that today. So it's more, it's, it's actual ETs uh, that are, that are helping the military uh, do these things. They're, they're helping them in space and not only on the planet too, correct? Like on earth. Um, well, they're working together. So certain aspects of them, not all of the military, but certain classifications, you know, I mean, we have many levels of classified above the president. And when they get up there, that's, those are aspects they've set up divisions of the military that work, work alongside with the ETs, certain, certain groups of ETs. And we're starting to get other guys, credible witnesses. So I was slave labor when I was up there. So there was a lot that I didn't know. There's a lot of things that have come to light in the last five years that other people have said that I go, wow, that sounds, that's a, that sounds crazy. Because to me, I didn't know. I didn't have a, I didn't have a smartphone when I was up there. I was slave labor. So I had, I lived in a, almost like a prison and I would get up in the morning and ride a train that was only for us, for the slave labor to the hangar. 
and I'd go in and for the first ship I worked on, I was locked essentially below deck to the lower decks where I worked. So I didn't even have a window. I just worked. I, I did maintenance. Um, later on, when I got promoted to cargo engineer, I had a bit of freedom and I could walk about the colony and, and buy my own train tickets to go to town and things. And it was still kind of an unpleasant experience, but I didn't have a lot of knowledge of, you know, the exo political system up there of what, who was, well, I heard rumors, people would come through. We'd always heard, you know, there's water cooler talk. And that's kind of where I get most of my information. I can confirm or deny what other people are saying, but I didn't really have access to what was going on. I was a, by every sense of the word, a second or third class citizen. Which is another credible uh, aspect to your story, Tony, because it's, it's impossible to think that a lot of these uh, people that receive their memories were all super really important up there. You know what I mean? It seems to be like, you know, they would need a bunch of other different kinds of uh, of labor going up there. You would need janitors. You would need repairmen. But it seems like everyone that's that's seeming to come forward is is has some kind of uh, savior story, like that that they were really, really important and they were doing all of these different things, you know? And it never yeah. really made too much sense to me because you would have, you would need to, you would need other kinds of people to do, because uh, an, an operation as large as that, you would need anything. Uh, you would need so many different, there's so many different facets of what would be going on up there. It's just like working at a job site. Right. It's just like, uh, you know, being a construction worker, you have a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different things. You know, not all of them can can be the, the, the head of the, the head construction worker, you know. Well, I'll tell you that most of the people that were up there in the program that I was in when I was on Ceres Colony and even Mars Colony Corp, um, the people that were in charge don't come back here. At all. They're not in a program where they get their memories erased. The soldiers came back and did not get their memories erased. Believe me, there are hundreds of thousands of men in America today that served on Mars in for the military that have all of their memories back. And they bought their silence. They got a paycheck that bought their silence. So people that have those stories, I'm a super, super soldier. I just talked about this the other day in a separate in another interview. You know, people that say I'm a super, super soldier. And then I've met a few of them and you meet, you meet them. And the thing about thing is, somebody that's a super soldier, and when I I'm not, I feel like that word's trademarked. Like I don't even need somebody that was a soldier that was an enhanced soldier, and put into combat repeatedly, would have problems, PTSD. The problems come with you. I came back with a host of problems from what I went through, and I was in combat only a couple times. You would have very, you would have very profound personality problems after being through that, after seeing those things. Like nobody would come back and just be hunky dory or happy about it. And there are people that are very unlikely that they say are taken for a soldier program. Um, but there's a lot of romanticism about it right now. And there's a, there are people out there that are doing the star family technique where they're like a psychic reading. I don't know how they're doing it, tarot cards, but and they're telling people that they you were a super soldier. I'm getting that feeling. You were a super soldier and people are just have zero memory of it and they may have been but they have zero memories so they're running with it and it's what all it is is clouding up the water for people that are actually providing credible intelligence on what's really going on because we really need we really need this information to be household you know a household name of people that can talk about the secret space program like you know the government's already working with aliens they have bases on the moon and mars people need to that had that sentence needs to be spoken in every home re realistically so that people understand what's really going on down here like there's a lot of evidence to say that the russian ukraine conflict is not based about russia and ukraine that there are assets there are extraterrestrials involved and there's a lot of things going on with that conflict that being said um you're right there's a lot there's a lot of dilution from from it when, when people come up and tell me unbelievable things the the lightsaber is a common denominator. Hey, guys say, yeah, we had a lightsabers and I was killing people. I'm like, that was a joke that we had on Series Colony that there is no, there's no such thing as a lightsaber. Every, it was a joke. It was how we, it was, we used it as a metaphor for impossible to pay with. So, you know, how are you going to pay for that? Well, I'll trade you a lightsaber, but you know, mm -hmm. like, because it would be worth, because it would be priceless for one and for two, it doesn't exist. It, it can't exist. 
So um, a lot of whistleblowers, as soon as I hear lightsaber or laser sword come out of come out, and I'm thinking they've erased you, and now you're back here, and you're a, you know what I mean, like you're a normal person. That doesn't make sense. So I, I I'm internally skeptical, but I don't I don't point fingers and call names because the memory process is very complex, and people that do have their memory that doesn't mean they didn't go if they get it wrong if they get if they get some points wrong that doesn't mean they weren't involved it just means that they shouldn't be speaking publicly about it and so i don't tell people because it's you don't want to shoot somebody down or they make an enemy but it's like a faucet you know your memories that are erased are behind a wall and it's like a little spigot that's letting the memories out and by criticizing somebody immediately or pouncing you could shut that faucet off and you may get real things that happen later. So I think it's a dangerous thing. So I, I make a point to not, you know, um, name names or tell people directly like that's BS. You know, even if I know it is because I, they could be mistaken. There were things I want to say that in the first three months of my memory recall, I was mistaken about a few things. I got the names of some ships wrong about a ship to ship incident that I was on. And I said it with researchers and it got checked out and it was wrong. I had the wrong ship. And because in the beginning, I had a lot of stronger reference points is like I remembered most of the emotional moments, the very the big spike, the big emotional spikes. I remembered those, but the, the things in between I didn't remember yet or didn't think of yet. And um, so I got a few things wrong. So it's that's totally so if somebody you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater when somebody's in the process of beginning to remember things that were intentionally deleted from them. Yeah. It's just like, if you don't have any memories, then I don't think they, anybody should have any business talking about it. That's just my oh, personal, that's just my personal feelings on it, you know? And again, I'm not saying any names or, you know, talking about anybody in particular, but yeah, it's, if you don't, it's only if you don't have any, if you don't have any memories, then don't talk about it. Like I, I've been uh, told that I'm a part of uh, some kind of program before by several people, but do I have any memory of it? Am I going to talk about it? No, I'm not because uh, that's not a, uh, that's not an honorable thing to do. How can I talk about something and that I have no idea know? about? Yeah. And how could they know? For one, the other thing is I've worked with people in the past. And this is an important point is that it can be dangerous to make somebody remember. So the person up there has every right to not remember. There were plenty of people that served that said, look, I don't want to remember this when they put me back. I'm happy that they're going to delete me. And I don't want to remember a minute of this. This is terrible what I lived through. I would never wish, I wouldn't wish this on anyone because they had a terrible, they had did a difficult job and they had a terrible existence at times. And so it's dangerous to force people to remember to tell somebody like you were involved, like if they want to remember, they will kind of, you know what I mean? It's like your higher self. That's how hypno regression works. Your higher self directs that. So to tell somebody that doesn't remember or that isn't asking for it and tell somebody that they were involved in one of these is actually a kind of a disservice. Um, I don't think it's I, because I've done it. I've met people that I've met up there and I said, look, I, please, you got to listen. You got to hear me out. And I would tell them the whole thing and the story and they, humored me for a while but after a while when it sunk in and the memories began to happen it was very damaging and very bad for them so it's i don't think it's it's a it's a reckless thing to do yeah i mean yeah and i agree i agree 100 it's like uh you know and i think a lot of a lot of these people are has romanticized about it to a degree that they that they've taken it on it's like you know listening to an interview or if somebody you know, could be listening to this uh, interview with me and you here today, whenever they're getting ready to go to sleep, they have it on when they're going to sleep and then they dream about it and then they wake up and then they automatically think that they were involved in some kind of way, you know, when that might not actually be the case. I've actually had that happen several times listening to uh, people in the in the SSP and, and super soldiers before bed, and I would be listening to them and certain words would, you know, hit my subconscious and then I would inevitably dream about it but I always knew that I was going to dream about it because your your subconscious is very susceptible whenever you're getting ready to go to sleep, you know, and I, I knew that that was going to happen so therefore I was like okay well. You know, I knew that I was going to dream about it. So I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't, you know, I was able to distinguish what could have possibly happened and, and what didn't happen and what was an actual dream and what wasn't a dream. 
I don't know if that makes mm. sense or not. No, that that yeah, if you're aware of it. Um, so uh, this brings up my, a, a, another great point is that the people that I have worked with, I have been able to determine quite a bit. And if I had to, you know, I don't know for sure, if I had to put a percentage on it, I'd say something like 60% of the people that reach out to me and get a consultation have tangible evidence supporting what they remember. And you go, well, how, how can that be if they're taken and they can't have, there's no evidence. There are certain common denominators that people that are taken in these programs with this technology that have. And what it is, is there are events in your real life that happen. And what I found is that when you begin to, because nobody, firstly, nobody has, nobody's a one and done. Nobody sees a gray in their living room and then nothing ever weird happens to them ever again. They, you know what I mean? Like they go, well, I was 10 years old and I came out one night in the middle of the night and there was a gray standing there in my kitchen. And then I don't remember. And then it's always, it's always the same thing. Like, then I don't remember what happened next. I think I went back to bed, you know, and uh, I can guarantee something happened. There's that. So nobody's a one and done. Anybody that says that, I go, okay, well, tell me the next thing that happened. And there's always more. There's never, there's never just that, that was it. And what I found is that if you arrange those incidences into a timeline, into, okay, so when did that happen? I, you were 10, when were you born? And I go from there and put a date on it. And once you begin to start chronicling the date of what, what of contact, that some, some people have a great deal of contact. Some people just have a little bit. I find over and over and over again, the same pattern of events of I could, where, where towards the end of the conversation, I can throw a date at them and go, well, wait a minute, what happened at this time? They go, whoa, how'd you know that? Because it's predictable because we are on a schedule with these technologies. So think about it like, and I'm just going to use this as, as one instance, one metaphor um, example. Imagine a extraterrestrial species or one of these programs working for humans that need a, G, a certain genome to, for whatever they're doing to make another species. And they, they need your body to go and get it in our biosystem. So they take you at 10 years old and put you back. And then when you're 15 years old, they go take you again and, and, and go and whatever, assess the progression of what they did to you. Then they put you back and then they take you again at 30 years old and they harvest what they did and they're finished. They close out the project. They take their genome, just a little bit of DNA. And that's all they needed because you're the one that actually grew it for them. They did it in one day. For them, it was one working day. They took you in the morning when you were 10. They took you when you were 15 at later on about noon. And they went back and closed it out at six o'clock because they have time travel. They put you back. What had happened to you reoccurring through your entire life. And you think that you had all these multiple things. So there is time travel involved. And that's the big elephant in the room that people also, when you talk about it, people give you the thousand yard stare. They go, yeah, okay. The time travel, our science, um, it's not like it's not impossible. It's impossible. Our science already know is totally admitted that time travel is doable, and in fact, you know, time dilation occurs with our spacecraft. So we already do a certain amount of time travel already with things that we've made. So I think it's but, not only time travel, Tony, but it's alternate realities, it's alternate dimensions, it's all kinds of things just like, all wrapped well, up I'm, into one. Right, baby steps. So I'm trying to explain it in baby steps. So yeah, you're right. It, you're right. There are other factors involved that get really mind, bo mind boggling, but in order to make sense of it, you can't just dump that all in somebody's lap that doesn't really is already skeptical. Absolutely. So but what I'm saying is that I found it hundreds of times where I can predict before the end of the conversation when somebody had their final um, or their most recent uh, event with contact and it happens all the time. And so this is, if I can do that, then they're not making it up. They're not dreaming it. They're not, you know, if I can do that, if I can predict what, where the conversation is going in a consultation, then that's a great deal of evidence. It's a great deal of evidence. Absolutely. Let's talk about the, uh, the technology a little bit and, and what kind of technology that, that they're using in these kinds of, uh, in these programs. Uh, how far advanced uh, do you think that they are ahead of us here on the planet that, you know, everyday uh, people have access to not the, uh, you know, the secret government or the, uh, the secret military. So we are, we are in a really uh, interconnected 
level of our society right now, which is great. Uh, you know, and we can trade, we have a great deal of interconnection between us and we rely on each other and we're all doing quite well. But our technologies are very futile and inefficient for what we are. They are way ahead of us um, without talking about the medical or the, I'll ca I call it consciousness technology, but it might as well be called spiritual technology. Like there are many different layers of extraterrestrial even within extraterrestrial groups that they don't share advanced technology among themselves. And another way to think about this is the military has greatly advanced technology, especially um, let's just take the internet computer networking technology. So I've talked to people that are in the Navy and they said that their computers, basically their internet is as fast as pointing. And like when they click on it, the movie instantly plays. It's almost instant. The military internet is that good. To where uh, it's 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 immediate we click on things and it loads for a minute so our technology is behind them so you understand we are the same people we're the military we are the military we're paying for that and we are the same society but we have less technology than our military does the extraterrestrial groups have the same exact thing so some of them have more technology than others and at the very top there's spiritual technology and in the draco group there's a great deal of nanotechnology that um there were higher grade nanites for the people, for the reptiles. There were nanites that were self-powered that stayed in them the whole time. And there were nanites they used on us for surgery, for surgery purposes that were only powered in the local area of the table you were on. If you got off the table, the nanites would stop working. So, and then they would take those out. They were a lesser tech. So the technology is divided like that. And there are many levels. So we were always trading for tech. So our, our mission statement on our ship on the Max von Laue was my last ship I was on when I was a cargo engineer. Our mission statement was trading for tech, acquiring better technology by any, really they said trading goods for tech or tech for tech, but really it was by any means necessary. That was the mission, take, get technology. And we did, but there were, they said that all of the stars within, um, distant visible distance of the earth with the human eye the next 3000 stars were all basically on the same page like we couldn't trade with any of those stars anybody in that area we've already tried to trade with everybody in that area we had to go farther very far away to find play people that have not been contacted by us or any other groups from our area and try to trade for them and get to tech, acquire technology um so there were many levels so we are way behind and especially on the medical side of things there's a lot that's that is being withheld from us maybe as a form of population control but i think medical technology is going to be one of the very first things that happens and um i mean we're kind of seeing like the food that we're fed is basically poison poisonous these days so the food technology is and is being used against us in a certain way i think i think if anything they're trying to dumb us down to keep us more under control um then help us out. And it's, it's, um, it's really a dream of mine to live in a place where the government wants me to prosper rather than fail. You know what I mean? That's what it seems like. And they had societies like that up there. There were, play, there were people in their society that the government was actually very, trying very hard for them to live longer, be healthier, and be better. So that's what's gonna happen. Uh, we, have a, we have across the board things that could be improved. Um, you know, to your question, I don't know if you meant anything in particular, but. Yeah, like, uh, I think a lot of this is due to the suppression of technology, Tony. If they would have released the technology whenever they had it to the general population, I don't feel like that we would be going through a lot of the things that, that we're going through now. And it could have been uh, way different and it could have been more of a, of a volunteer kind of program instead of a forcefully abducted and taken kind of program if they would have released the technology. And uh, I've interviewed a, a few people that talk about the, uh, you know, the, the brain implants, the, uh, the brain chips, the, the Neuralink uh, implants. And that was a big thing that, that they were using in space. Did you, did you have access to? Uh, I believe I had like an that? implant. And then that's how the translator worked. I believe I had an implant 
And I believe that mine didn't have the full capabilities that somebody else that had the same implant would have on like, on like I had a restricted version, like they were watching me and they were, they were monitoring, they could monitor me if they wanted. And it was basically for the translator. Um, so I could speak to other species and it would translate in my head, like the telepathic communication. There were some species that had organic tele tele telepathy, excuse me, but there were many that were, it was a mechanical. Um, there were people that got side effects from using mechanical telepathy. So there were machines that you could talk to telepathically uh, and like order your coffee kind of thing. And some people would get sick from them, from the, they would get bad headaches from it, from the mechanical telepathy. Um, so the, the Neuralink are a kind of a double-edged sword because on one hand, it's gonna enable us to communicate with each other in a way we never have. And on the other hand, it's gonna enable somebody else to watch what goes on in your mind and possibly um, influence you. So it's a very dangerous, it's a very, it's a very useful and dangerous technology, a lot like a gun. So um, there was something you said before the Neuralink that you were talking about, um, about some of the other tech that, that is up there, but uh, well, about it being released. So that, that's the other thing is that our entire system from top to bottom about releasing technologies you look at the space, don't, don't point your finger at the space program and have a lot of anger for not releasing those technologies because you got to pay to go to college to learn how to even do your damn taxes. You have to pay to learn how to do anything that earns money. So high school, your local, your, your early grade school teaches you how to read and write and how to interact and how to communicate. And high school kind of reverberates and is supposedly a prep for college, but it's not. But it's college is where you learn how to make money. And our system, we live in a money system. So what they've done is hidden all of that knowledge from us. It's simple knowledge too. But anything that's worth a damn, you can't find the information for. You just can't because it's colleges use it. That's their product. They've changed information into a product and they've held technology from the general public. Whoever can't afford to pay it doesn't have access. And most of the people that need some of this, they can, that's the reason they can't pay it is because they don't understand how the money system works. People that do well in college could come out and they're fully capable of earning money. They, they understand the money system. College teaches you that. So our, that's right here on earth, right here on boots on the ground tech. Um, our, very, our very system of living is being withheld from us in that regard. So that's got to change. If we're going to, you know, college is going to have to adopt the more advanced stuff and kind of let that stuff go so people learn how to live down here. And that's the thing is, how do they do that? How do they integrate a, uh, a new technology that they've had forever w without taking any kind of responsibility, right? Because that's the way that they always want to do it. And is the way that they have always done it. It oh. is never taking responsibility. If they've had this technology forever, they just can't come out and be like, oh, yeah, here's a brand new uh, you know, med beds and, uh, you know, all of this super advanced medical technology. And then we have like these implants, they have to put it through somebody just like they're, they're doing with Elon Musk, right. With his, uh, Neuralink implants. So they, they, they're using him to release the technology that they have had for decades. Well, you know, I think that's politics on, on how they're doing it. Um, you know, what's going to happen is that it's going to happen quick. That's what I mean. Like really at this point. So I'm not so much worried about getting the med beds, you know, where, where we're at today. Like our, the problem we're facing is that people don't believe med beds exist. That's really the truth. So people, I'm sure that your audience, people watching this show are what I'm, what I'm saying may sound fantastical, but it's not entirely new. So people that are watching shows like these, but watch my show or any of the interviews, they're already looking and have an open mind to um, the world as we know it not being exactly how it is. So they're open to the secret world behind the scenes. The fact is that most people are not. Most people believe that exactly for face value verbatim what they're seeing on CNN. And this is a huge proportion of the population. And these, this is what we've got to do. So rather than give those people med beds, they need to understand that med beds exist, that there's a history. And so that major dump of, of knowledge has to happen and it has to happen quickly. And that will set, that will tee up every, all the other problems getting worked out. So that's kind of where we're at right now. That's kind of where I feel with my message. You know, I, 
I started out of a mind to just figure out what the hell happened to me. When I got the memories back, I wanted counseling. I needed someone and I knew I wasn't going to get it from a counselor. So I got, I fell into researchers. I talked to researchers and I just wanted someone to talk to. Is there anybody else that you know that went through this? Can I talk to them? Then I started doing interviews. I said, please go on the record, do interviews. It's, it's for your own safety. Once you're public, they, it's harder, it's harder for them to do anything bad to you. So I did interviews. People started contacting me and then I began researching what people are telling me. And always I've been researching my own account to kind of prove it to myself, what happened, you know, it's fantastic. I don't want it to be real. I don't want a lot of the terrible things I did to be true. Now, six years later, it's about telling people that this is real. People, you know, the, the reason they get away with this is the secrecy. They've got, they've got us so spun up believing other stupid stuff that flat earth and everything that, you know what I mean? Like they're, they've got so much distraction and they've dissipated, you know, we've got one ounce of truth that we want to get out here and they've poured a thousand gallons over it. So to dissipate it, so people can't find it, or if they look at it, it's too big of a challenge to get to the truth. So we need to make the truth bigger. We need to make the truth a thousand gallons and it needs to get out. People need to proliferate and talk about this amongst themselves. That's kind of my message right now. And that's where I am since in the process, since I got my memories back is like, look, mom and dad need to know about this. It's time to quit. It's time to quit being embarrassed about speaking about the secret space program and UFOs. It's on the news. You can go to any of the big news websites and Google the UAP. I love how they renamed, they rebranded it because they trashed the term UFO. Because if you say UFO, people have been subconsciously, subliminally, and subconsciously programmed to laugh at whatever comes out of your mouth next. Say UFO, I saw one. Yeah, whatever. They, they're already defensive against it. So they instead of unprogramming that, they rebranded it. Now it's a UAP. And it's totally believable. You can say, yeah, I saw a UAP last night. No, wow, really? And then say, yeah, I saw a UFO last night. They go, whatever, man, I don't want to hear it. Because we're programmed. We, we don't understand the, the level of programming that we're under. So having been going, gone through trauma-based mind control, and being, I got reprogrammed. I went from black project to black project and got reprogrammed each time. Men, you know what I mean? Like mind control. And so now I see it in what they're doing through the media, the media is like, once you realize that they're everything, literally everything they show you on the media is with an objective. The Johnny Depp, Amber Heard stuff was a huge distraction because it wasn't going their way there for a while. They had all good news about the Ukraine and everything. And then it started not going their way. And here, look at this Johnny Depp, who cares? But most people fell for it hook, line and sinker. And they, they just swallow same thing with Whatever the slap, the them. Will Smith slap. This Will Smith slap distracted yeah. everyone from all kinds of different. It's just, just a distraction. You want to know what happened that day, the same day of the Will Smith slap? Go ahead. Did you know about this? No. So, you know, you're familiar with the UAP report of Congress. Yes. So they came out with the UAP report. And I think it was two, three weeks before the slap. The day of the slap, the continuation of 1500 page report came out to Congress publicly. And it was not about just the UAPs. It was about the abductees. It was about people. There's a 1500 page report that the, they presented, that the Navy presented to the committee. And it was about people that had been abducted and women that there was evidence in there of women that had pregnancies that came and went and people that had been abducted by UAPs and had radiation poisoning and they had medical testimony. So they had all the proof of people, not only the UAPs in our airspace, but abducting people. But that very day, the night before, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. And so none of it was on the news, not even on the website. Oh, by the way, there's a UAP report. Here it is. It was a little eight page. It was a little eight paragraph thing on the 1500 page report. It's about people being abducted. Go away. And then that was it. So they can they lived up to their obligation of telling us. But they they had a will slip. They had that fiasco. To so they cover could push it, it under the rug. Yeah. They gave us one ounce of truth and they put 2000 gallons of crap on top of it in the same 24 hours. And so everybody doesn't know and they don't believe it. So that's exactly what happened. And that's what the Amber Heard stuff is, was, you know, that's what that all is. There's plenty of other things going on. I believe it was about the Ukraine war that it started to turn against the Ukrainians and they didn't want to cover it. So they just distracted. So once you realize that the, what the, the media, not, not only the news, but all media, once you realize that there's a level of programming in there and you're starting to look for it, like, what are they programming? What are they trying to do here? It doesn't work. 
the programming doesn't work. If you're not aware that you're being programmed, it works on you. It works on everybody. And so that's the other thing that I, I really try. And then people don't want to believe me. I get into a lot of uh, discussions. I don't want to say arguments, but I really try my best to drop breadcrumbs for people that are, that are still very much programmed. And uh, they don't want to believe it. They just don't, the, your ego gets in the way, you know, when you get a lot of, it's very, very few people can just stop in the middle of, of the, in the argument when they realize they're wrong and go, you know, you're right, I was wrong. Very few people can do that. They continue to argue. And that's what's going on. So everybody knows, you know, more people know now, more people know now than any time in history that the media is lying about everything. You know, just by what we witnessed. We went the whole, the whole government process of what's going on and uh, people are in real denial on what's going on with the economy and what the government, we had the government pulled out from under us uh, and dare I say hijacked. And now we're seeing our economy being fleeced for literally trillions of dollars was being stolen from our economy. The shelves are bare. The gas is outrageous. And they have a little tiny conflict on the other side of the world they blame it on. It's not the truth. The truth is we're being robbed to the tune of trillions of dollars. So, and that's was behind the driver behind getting rid of the last administration who wasn't robbing us. And we were had a flourishing economy because it was based on, you know, American pro-American economics. So that's the deal. And it's so charged because people were programmed. You could see the programming, whether you, whether you subscribe to one side or the other, you could see that the programming was the best they've ever done. They, they pulled out all the stops and they had people burning cities down. Yep. So that's a big deal. I think that's where we're at with disclosure, right? Like that's the technology that we need to worry about right now. Like once we, once people can, once, the majority of people realize that there'd be a program like that, then we can worry about the next step. It's like a one step at a time. But right now we need them to know that they, these programs have are way ahead of us and they've been programming us and controlling us all basically all along. And they, uh, they need, we need to shine light on it. They're getting away with it because it's because of the, they've kept it secret. Don't you think that there's some kind of uh, deception going on with the, the UFO uh, and ET disclosure. I mean, how can we trust uh, the people, the same people that's been covering it up for 70 years since Roswell are the same people that's now disclosing it. And we have all of these different uh, three-letter agencies infiltrated into the, the UFO community. We have uh, proclaimed uh, counterintelligence people that's worked for the DOD, the CIA and all this, and, and people are taking their word hook, line, and sinker. And it doesn't make any sense to me that we would trust any of these people or we would trust the people that's been covering it up forever to finally come out and be like, oh yeah, by the way, we know that we've been covering this up. You know, we've been covering this up for like 70 years, but all of a sudden now it's real. Now uh, it's unidentified. Well, they, they're kind of have to for a few reasons. It's a lot, it's complicated why they have to right now. And you're very right that people from the CIA are coming forward. It's really, uh, it's really unsettling to me to sit on a panel at one of these live talk, talks that I do when I go to a, con a convention and talk live and sit on a panel with a guy that says he just was in the CIA a few years ago and then listen to their pack of lies that come next. And what I found is that they have the same kind of narrative. So what they're doing is, okay, uh, the program I was in, we would leave Ceres. The Ceres planetoid is in between Mars and the asteroid belt. It's the largest asteroid. It's about 580 miles in diameter. And we would get up, we lived inside of it. About a quarter million people lived underground in caverns all throughout the planet that were connected by trains. We would get on our ship and leave and I'd say it's 7 a.m. in the morning. And we would fly either immediately to another system or to Jupiter and use the Jupiter portal and go to another galaxy and interact with four, we'd have four or five stops at different worlds and we would pitch trade deals with them or deliver cargo from a previous deal and, a, and then take cargo aboard and then go back. And we would get back the same day. So there's a lot more to that. It was more, a lot more, a little bit complicated, but it wasn't a long trip. And when you think about getting anywhere in our galaxy, that's a, what, 400 billion stars, 500 billion stars, and then getting to 18 or 19 other galaxies through the portal we're in the trillions of worlds, trillions of worlds that we had access to in one day's trip. 
So the CIA narrative of all these guys that I've sat on and listened to that's spitting out absolute BS, their narrative is that there's only 90, there's only a few hundred other worlds that we can interact with because the rest are too far away. And so what they're doing is they're going to disclose, but there's a fence, you know, like there's our, there's our system, but we can only get to this system because that's it. Space is too big. So that's their narrative. They're going to catch, catch it it's because that way that they have access to everywhere else. And we are stuck with the same people. And remember I said that the, the nearby 3000 stars are all basically the same, the same as this solar system. It's the same societies. There's nothing new. They've already dealt with everybody nearby. Kind of like this, kind of like a, the price of something in the United States is the same every state you go. But when you go to Thailand, it's cheaper or Mexico, it's cheaper. So that's what it is. They want to keep you in the United States. When we get into space, they want to keep you where everything's the same price. So that's that's the deception that's they're putting the they're laying the brickwork now in our community for that to be public later. They're going to get these guys that are going to be publicly vaulted in front of the mainstream. And uh, well, it doesn't matter because it's a baby step. So it's only a matter of time. Like once we get into space, we're going to interact with other things like it's it's time you know, is it going to work in our favor? Time is the greatest lie detector. So they can pull it off. If they pull it off, they can pull it off for a short time, but it won't. Once once the genie's out of the bottle, um, you know, we're going to get visited by other species from very far away in the same deal, and we're going to get access to Jupiter. So there's, there's really, it's really a futile attempt on their part for what, for what's going on. We're going to be an intergalactic species, and it'll happen fairly overnight. It's not going to be we get into space or we find bacteria in space and then it's like thousand years. It's once we, once we contact other ETs, we're going to be, it's going to be overnight. And again, just like with the, the medical technologies, how do they reveal that they've had uh, these craft? And I, I think that that's a big uh, reason, uh, you know, for the, the, the cover up in the first place is because they had to figure out how to reverse engineer the craft and then now that they've done it, they, 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 there's the deception there is because they don't want to reveal their technology, right? And that, that the military has had this advanced craft for a really, really long time. And because then it takes, uh, it means that they would have to take responsibility for it and, and answer, answer questions. So then the question becomes, well, how do they reveal that, that they have had this, uh, interstellar space travel tech without uh, a giant revolt you know well i mean to some point i mean we, let's look let's look at it let's be honest the we know politicians do ho things they should be put in jail for and i i don't want to I, I don't want to be political right i i really don't I, to the audience to people watching this i don't want to preach to you about politics but you can take any president and find scandal around him, or you can find any of a thousand politicians and see that they did things they should be in jail for, and they never go to jail. Do you get what I mean? Like, people, really, I mean, um, I, without naming names, I'm sure everybody that's heard me just say that thought of somebody, yeah. you know, throughout history that should, they, they're a politician and they should be sitting their ass in jail, pardon my language, but they don't go to jail. So, and everybody's okay with that because they come and go and they're out of here. So that's, what's going to happen with these people that committed these crimes. And, you know, I, and the, I'm not saying that definitely, right? Like, I'm not saying that because I know something more than you do. I, I'm making a logical conclusion is that the same way that politicians don't get in trouble and we forget about them because it moves on. They're going to come out and admit that these things happen. And there's going to be so many sparkly, shiny things in disclosure that they're going to go, oh, by the way, these guys were doing bad stuff the same way, the same way that they cover it up. There's going to be so many good things that they show us with disclosure. And they go, wait a minute, people that go, wait a minute, but you guys were selling us, we were being enslaved and you were doing medical experiments and people were abducted, kids from war zones were being taken and killed and used for experiment. Like once you start, want those people, the same way the Epstein flight list disappeared, never happened in court. That's what's going to happen. They're just going to sweep that under the rug and disclosure will happen. And, you know, I have mixed emotions about that. Of course, morally, like these people did a lot and need to be punished. There are people that need to be punished even today. But the greater good is that we just hurry up and get a disclosure because people are dying. You know, the, the thing is, like, if the, if the struggle is over punishing people from what they did in the past versus getting a disclosure and having access to 
um, ET species, even just their internet, not even travel, but just getting access to their internets to and the technologies that they have, getting those access and seeing humanity transform is going to be far greater than getting revenge on the people that ultimately somebody that's that criminal hurts themselves anyway. They punish them. Criminals punish themselves. So, uh, you know, karma is a real thing, but crim being criminally minded is basically self-destructive. Um, people are good people, not because it's in their heart, it's because it makes the most sense. Uh, you know, it's just the best way to live because it makes sense. You don't hurt people, they don't hurt you and you thrive. So um, the people that are in trouble for what they've done are, are, are a side note, not the main, not the main uh, thing that's gonna happen in a disclosure. I think we have far too much to gain by getting access to the knowledge base. And I'll say this, that everybody's got their eye on the med bed so that they can help grandma around for a lot longer. And that's great. But the real thing is that people that are led astray right now in the world, people that are in our, in our system that are suffering from it are aspiring to go in the wrong direction. People that are doing good in the system are usually aspiring to go in the wrong direction. They're aspiring to be richer or better um, with money or, you know, a status, they're trying to climb status. When we see what these ETs, when, what the really advanced ETs are living like, we're going to, that's going to fall to the kind of the wayside. We're going to aspire to be better people, you know, like spiritually better because we're going to see how they actually do it. And there, there is a, there is a threshold of technology that, um, you know, there's only so much you can do with mechanical, there's only so many gizmos you can make before it's all goes back to consciousness. When, when your consciousness evolves to enough, you don't need technology anymore. And there's actually quite a bit of species above that level, above that threshold that live like that. And that's who we need to aspire to be more like. We don't need to aspire to be like somebody that has a fancy car or a yacht. We need to aspire to be like somebody that has a deeper connection with the universe and can manipulate it with their mind. And that's what we don't have. So when a disclosure is going to give us those examples and people are going to kind of start just, I think, and naturally kind of clean up their act because they're going to see that the things we're chasing in the wrong direction aren't playing, aren't what they do, aren't what these other species that are very well off do, these high, these advanced species. So I, I, um, I'd rather, I'm not, I'm not mad. Uh, per se at what's what people felt they had to do in the past to get into space um more more concerned with just getting everybody on the same page that you know the whole world like we are we are way far behind what's going on we need the knowledge more than we need the justice about it justice will work itself out yeah it's just a shame that all the people that's been uh disclosing this information the abductees the people talking about the the ssp is just all going to kind of be brushed under the rug you know that's a that's a travesty in my eyes of course but yeah the the med bed situation i just brought up the med bed as an example earlier i didn't say it sure. because i thought that we were going to be getting it in the next couple of months like everybody seems to say and then they always push back the date oh it's going to be next year next five years never made sense to me right now they want the population dead they want to kill us they don't they're not going to give us any kind of technology right now that's going to heal us you know that's just not logical well, and that's not critical and they do have the technology it is there but it is just not meant for us right now and then but th there are people like you said that are trying to you know get get rich off of it and make money and and sell uh their their uh crafted med bed that they've put together with their spare parts from their backyard you know what i mean and they're charging people like thousands <laughs> of dollars to come to their house and use their uh med bed that they've uh that, that they said that'll heal you from all of your problems and take away your cancer and all this you know it's uh it's a it's a huge huge problem um yeah, you touched on something there. Uh, the other thing is, like, let's face it, there's there's a lot of people in the world that I wouldn't want to introduce to another species. There's a lot of people that have been abused their whole, you know, hurt people, hurt people. And there are a lot of people that have grown up in an abusive system. The systems abuse them and they're abusive as a result. And so that's kind of, we got to unring that bell when we're talking about um, introducing other species to come down here. So there's a real divide in society. I mean, we've come a long ways, obviously. I'm not saying 
that it's uh, hopeless or that we're terrible or by any means, but I'm saying we have a ways to go before people, you, there's a lot of people out there that victimize other people on a daily basis. And there's a lot of people that treat people very badly. And so if I were an ET, I wouldn't want to go down where I'm going to be rebels with those people. And that's kind of, you know, that's another factor that we need to think about. So the thing is the system has perpetuated those people. The system could take care of it. So until we start seeing, so they're, they're very, I think the very first thing is they're just trying to kill off people like that. Like that's to get it under man, to get it more manageable because they can't just go and start to reprogram 7 billion people in a positive way. So they're, you know what I'm saying? Like they're planning it. They do things. Our controllers have done things on hundred year plans for thousands of years. They have been, when you look at the things that the, like just the British empire, like whenever they plan something, it's 50 years that they do it from start to finish. So that's where we're at right now. Like we're not going to get an overnight solution to our problems, but we are seeing them take the opening steps towards long-term uh, solutions to what's going on because they've really neglected us. They've, they've had us to where we fight amongst ourselves. And that's going to stop. I think the other thing is, is that because of um, communication, because shows like yours exist and people like me can self-publish and get my book out, that, you know, it's, it's ramped. We're doing it on our own without the controller, without the controllers. Like we, we are sorting ourselves out. And the next generation of kids coming up are way more um, pl pliable to that than we were. You know, there's, they're, they're, way, they're way more open-minded. They're being treated to be open-minded. They're treated, you know, um, you know, I don't want to get on a bunch of hot topics here, but they're being trained. They're being trained to be a lot more inclusive on everything. So the next generation is already kind of way ahead of us as far as um, ready to interact with other species, but they have other lifestyles. They, uh, even, you know, you think about grandpa and grandma. So if they had ETs, you know, people from the World War II era, when they see ETs, it's a good or bad guy, good or bad, should we kill it? Should we shoot it? And so nowadays we have the distrust. Our generation is distrusting. But we go, okay, I get it. You guys are coming down here, but I do I should I trust you? And the next generation is like, come on down and mind if you're okay, then I'm okay. You know, like we're seeing a lot of uh, behavior changes in generation generationally that are big, huge leaps and bounds, and that's from the controller mechanism as well. So, do you think that all of the uh, the, the collapsing of our economy, the um... The, the food shortages, uh, all of the problems that, that we're currently facing uh, right now in this moment is, is actually for our betterment and that we are going to get something good and beneficial for everyone when everything is, is said and done. Because I can oh, see, yeah, go ahead. Well, that's a good question. And I'm a little bit nervous, right? So I, I lost everything in the last recession and the great recession well, for me, it was in 06, it started, I was in Michigan, and most people got it in 08, but I lost my house, my business, everything, my career. And so I'm seeing it happen all over again. And I'm kind of like, you know, puckering up here. Um, that being said, the people that the people that defend the system the most are the ones that do good in the system. So the, when I talk about the masses of people that swallow everything the news gives them hook line and sinker these are people that are functioning in the system they got some college they got a pretty good you know five six figure job and they're doing well they have their house and everything and they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear from anybody else because they the system has told them they're better than most people and their ego is in where it's where they think it's supposed to be and their lifestyle is where they think it's supposed to be and they're going to trade their car in and get the new one so the, the these people are the ones that you can't unprogram because the system is working. They're like, I don't want to hear it because everything that the system told me is working perfectly for me. So it's not until that system topples and these people get shook and go, no, you can't have that car. And no, you can't do that. And you can't do this. And you know what I mean? Well, like it's got to dismantle before they're going to open their eyes and go, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then you can put a new system in place that's all inclusive. So it's absolutely brutal to think that that's necessary. And I hope it's not. I hope it doesn't get as bad as it was in 08 and 09 for a lot of people. There were a lot of good people that lost and were homeless. And I saw it happen and it was terrible. But um, the system, 
needs to be shaken from out from underneath those people. And that's, and that's honestly, I feel like that's a majority of people are, have faith in the system. So the system has to fail for them to accept a new, new data, the, a new system that um, includes a disclosure element. So, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like ever the optimist, right? We're seeing, hopefully they're not going to put us down. Right? Yeah. I'm ever the optimist that this is, this, that we're working on a, a brighter day. And it may, I hopefully it's not completely necessary, but I hope that's the plan. But we, we don't know. I, I, I'm only speculating to you guys. Yeah, I think that we either, we have one of, uh, you know, kind of two options here. We either, you know, we get assimilated. Because uh, I think there's two, two main uh, groups that are vying for power right now. And, uh, and, and there's a struggle for what, what we're going to get. And uh, one one group, uh, you know, wants to wants to keep things kind of the way that they are, with the, this whole uh, you know slave system, and another group wants to um, not so much make it a slave system. But that doesn't mean necessarily that they're good. I think that it's a it's a struggle between evil and a like the lesser of two evils, basically. And uh, we either get the the, uh, the agenda twenty one surveillance kind of reality that uh, one side is pushing for, or we get a a freedom kind of reality that um, you know a lot of this technology is released, and uh, we we live in a better world and a better reality. And I am pushing for the latter of those two because I think that that's exactly what's going to happen. I think that we are going to come in right at the end, uh, just when we think that uh, there's not going to be any kind of way out. And, and you know, we win and we get the reality that we want. And that's the um, that's what I'm pushing for. And that's what I'm trying to, uh, you know, get other people on board with, because we know that the way that it works is, is belief. And when, when a certain amount of people believe in something, it makes it a lot uh, easier to bring that reality in, into your consciousness and make that a, make that a reality for people to, uh, you know, uh, be in. And the, the problem is, is that a lot of people's consciousness has been hijacked and their belief has been hijacked. So they're inevitably creating what they don't want and what they've you know, that's what a big part of the conspiracy community has done, has actually got it down for people to think that there's no way out, that the, the monster is too big and we can't defeat it when it's really the opposite. We actually do have all the power. There's a lot going on um, behind the community. There's a lot of group meditations. There's a lot of groups that are really perking up and, and taking the consciousness technology aspect of it and doing something with it. So consciousness tech, you know, when you talk about the two different timelines, one would be with a surveillance state, one that's based on technology. And one, the other one that's based on our, on our disclosure with our freedom is based on consciousness. And that's the greater of the two, because our consciousness, if it can be uh, cleaned up, because we've been poisoned mentally over time, if we can clean that up, our consciousness, group consciousness is very advanced. And that's kind of how we go to the next level. And so that's ultimately makes the most sense. Slavery is self-defeating. When you think about some of the great people that come along and advance a species, a species, some of the great people in history that have come along and had advancements for all of us, if they were a slave, they would have never done it. And so when you enslave the population, you stop the advancements from happening. And you're just directly a prisoner. So all, over time, even if you're the master, the slave master of the population, you're shooting yourself in the foot because the population would have advanced and you would have learned from it, too. So over time, that's what's got to happen, because it's just the logical conclusion of what what it would be. So our consciousness has been hijacked. And like I said, that that brings us back to what I said, is that that's the point that I'm trying to make, is that people need to know that this secret space program is real. ETs are working with our government. They're not all great. Some of them are great. Some of them are not. They have their own. They all have their own interests in mind. It's a matter of perspective. It's not good or evil. And that this needs to be a household name. That the 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 fact that people are being abducted. There are twenty in backs. There's time travel. These are things that need to be spoken in every house. And that's going to inject it into the mass consciousness of everybody and kind of kick the door open. We've got our foot in the door now. We need to kick the door open to a disclosure and then eventually, then we'll worry about the next step then. But our consciousness, we all have to stick together with what we're thinking about. 
and we kind of do, but the consciousness, like you said, has been hijacked thus up to this point for a small group of people. They've manipulated it, what everybody thinks subconsciously over, you know, Hollywood. And, and that the other thing is that it was unbelievable. And you said the news is all on the same Hollywood's in the same page and the news and the big tech media that they're all on the same page. It was all unbelievable until last year when you saw that they were all on the same page. They were all saying the same exact thing that didn't make any damn sense. So now everybody, there's proof that it's true. That's what they're all one. one con, they're all one entity, and they've been using our subconscious to do get what they want for them. And we've suffered. So we need to all get together through uh, forms of alternate media and get on the same page for ourselves, for the betterment of ourselves. And it's going to happen. It's it's taken. I, I think once once it reached the snowball years ago was it, it would stop rolling. It was a little tiny snowball. And you'd have to, somebody had to come along and push it. I think the snowball of disclosure has got, is big enough to where it has its own momentum right now that I think if I, <clears throat> I quit talking about it, it would still keep going. Like my story would keep being told. And so that's what I mean. The <clears throat> sooner or later, it's going to be an avalanche and we're going to get our change that we need. And I think that's where we're at. I think these are good, good days, good times for us. Are you still involved Aside, with the programs at all? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, are you still involved at all or are you completely out of the, uh, the I'd like to think that I'm inactive. Yeah. I'd like to think that I'm inactive. It feels that way for me. I have met, there are a few, some people, very few people that are, that I consider active in the programs. And these are very important people for obvious reasons. We can find out what's going on. We can judge one way or another, you know, you can get some, any pip of data is progress. And so people that are active have pips of data and there are very few of them. Most people are inactive. The people that get their memories back, it's after it's all over with. So I believe I'm inactive, but honestly, I, I can never be entirely sure of it. I could be being used and not know it, to, yeah, be, to be honest. I think that that's an important aspect because a lot of, shoot, dude, a lot of this, a lot of this community is very, very dark, man. Like, you know, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten kind of, uh, you know, a little deep into it. And it's like, there's a lot of dark activities and a lot of people doing things that, uh, you know, I don't really want get, to get too much into it. But um, do, do you have any abilities, uh, Tony, like, do you have remote viewing uh, abilities? Or did you come back with any kind of um, abilities? So you know, I don't like to claim any of that, but since I researched my information and um, found what went on in Inyo Kern in my first stop in Peru. And I, so without explaining all this, I would just like to tell everybody my book is available in paperback and Kindle on Amazon. It's called Series Colony Cavalier, and it explains all this. It makes a lot more sense of what I'm telling you if you uh, have a hard time believe what we're talking about. So my book makes perfect sense of it. The Kindle version is only 10 bucks and the paperback, I think it's like $26 or something. Um, but it, it tells the story from, from A to B and it was a bestseller for six weeks. So every, it's got really good reviews, three, three or 400 reviews. A lot of people really ate the book right up and it explains a lot. So that being said, the early years in Inyo Kern, I went back and found the funding, the CIA declassified library.gov. And I found the funding and the program that I was in it was uh, Grill Flame, Project Grill Flame, that's morphed into Project Center Lane and then into Project Gateway. So I found that technology and there was a lot of actually quite a bit of declassified information about it. And I started talking about it on my show, Talks with Tony, that's on Patreon. I have a Patreon show because a lot of my interviews got scrubbed there in the, the end of 2020. So I went behind a $5 paywall and so that my interviews don't get deleted by, you know, or trolled, you know, the trolls are out. Mm. But um, on there, I kept talking about it, like, man, I need to try this. We were trying it. So I, my co-host was Jackie Kenner. She's got married and she's pregnant right now. So she's not co-hosting with me anymore. Uh, she got, you know, she started her family. But we were trying it, the CIA doc, and we tried separate things. The Monroe Institute um, combination with things in the CIA document, gateway document. And they worked. Um, there were, there were several occasions where I used the techniques that I remembered and what I remembered from going through back then, coupled with the techniques at the end of this document, 
And they started to work. And I said, I kept saying on the show, like, look, we need to start a group and do this. And I've got a group of 20, 25 people that are a tier three that actually pay more on the Patreon. And we meet and we do Zooms and we set, um, we set intentions uh, for healing people or remote viewing or changing things. Whatever, whatever we decide on, we kind of have a vote on what our target should be. And we go in and use the techniques in the document and we do it simultaneously. Like Courtney Brown from Farsight calls it going as a flock. And we're getting huge results. One girl had COVID. She had COVID and she was only a few days into it. We did a, we did a group healing on her and she was fine the next morning. It went, she was fine. She had a bit of a sore throat. The rest of she said, no, I feel great. It's all, it's, she was in bed with COVID on two on Wednesday and on Thursday she got up and was walking around it was fine we did a group meditation on her so it worked and you can call it a coincidence I'm, I won't I won't um you know I won't I won't label it you know and tell, blow my own horn louder than I should I get it so it could be she might have just got over it but we've done so many other things we've we do this weekly and every time there's like, we're getting huge feedback from, so what happens is the following meeting, we go, what happened to you? What was, what did you see? What was your feedback? And we're getting things that are beyond coincidental every week. It works. This technique works. And so these are manifestation techniques and remote viewing techniques. And we remote viewed the, the arc that exopolitics was talking about in the Caribbean or in the Atlantic. And we've remote viewed a few other things. We set, I set a bucket in my garage and I would put things inside the bucket and we remote viewed it. And we had like 60% accuracy. There were people that couldn't see in the bucket, but they saw my snow boots next to it. There's no way they could have known. There were people that see things in, in the garage. And, we, you know, we're doing this to kind of like as practice, like as an exercise to think of it as a like a um, aerobics class for your remote, for your psychic ability. But mm -hmm. we've lately, <clears throat> lately kind of set our sights on higher things like ET, like disclosure and ET contact benevolent et contact and the timeline the positive freedom based timeline that that you um are hoping for as well we've kind of set our intentions toward that recently and um so these these techniques with these it's a technology it's not some woo stuff the technology behind it works and so that yeah so to answer your question i remember some things that i went through and yes i still use them Here's a really weird thing that I've uh, found that's happened, Tony, is that a lot of, not a lot, but some of these people that come back with uh, these abilities, like, uh, you know, healing abilities, uh, you know, tracking abilities, uh, remote viewing abilities, um, they can be infiltrated and, and taken over in order to uh, attack people and do uh you know nefarious things now whether that's by the uh the, the the military or by the cia or whatever but um i mean those are the people that that put these abilities uh you know uh created these abilities within these people so it only makes sense that they would be able to uh use them for their own agenda whether these people are aware of it or not and i'm not saying that you are i'm just saying i'm just commenting on you know, some other people in well, uh, the community could be doing this. So I would say, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what your, uh, what specifics you're talking about exactly, but I will say that people that have been through the program and been through the, the trauma-based mind control do have programming um, still in there that is very dangerous that they could use against them. Um, that being said, so this stuff, these abilities, everybody, has, everybody can play basketball. Some people are like Michael Jordan and some people are like grandma and they can't, they barely can get the ball in the hoop, but everybody can play basketball. Psychic ability is the same way with practice. You get better at it. So it's not 100. The boogeyman isn't out there 100% of the time. That being said, yes, they have turned people out. So they have, I can, I can, it makes every bit of logical sense that right now at this very moment, there's a room full of people being programmed through an MK ultra style programming and they're going to be psychic um, agents at some point. And then also programmed. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to touch on the other th parts of it, um, but also program to do other things, assassination and seduction and other things that they do. But these, this is a real thing. What you said is a real thing. There are agents out there that have psychic abilities. There are um, probably vast resources that they found out how to kill people remotely using this technology. It's just a technology. So 
Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like what you're saying, like there are people that exist that could be using these techniques, this technology for the wrong thing, but that isn't a reason to not use it. Um, I found that it's very powerful and it's something that we all do anyway. You do it naturally anyway. You just don't realize it. And like I said, everybody can play basketball and with some practice, you can get pretty decent at it. So everybody is psychic with some practice. You can get these. Some people are just naturally gifted. Um, but I can't, uh, I would tell anybody to not operate from a place of fear to not say, well, you know, the CIA is out to get me. I'm afraid of what might happen. I'm not going to do this. The government's the boogeyman is out because that's what they want you to do. They want you to do nothing because you're afraid of it. So, uh, I would say just don't operate out of a place of fear. If you're afraid of it, that's consent. Fear is consent to an animal. That's afraid of the animal that's stalking it. It's consent for that animal to get it. If it's not afraid, you ain't getting me. I'm out of here. It gets away. And that's, it works with people too. So they, when you want to make, you want to make your enemy afraid of you because that's consent for you to defeat him. And so don't operate from a place of fear. And that's very, very, very important when you're talking about an astral um, operation or, you know, going into and using a meditative thing to, to do something outside of the holo, quantum hologram that we live in. So uh, fear is a big deal. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's an absolute boat anchor for you in that that regard so um i don't know if that answered your question about i'm not, like i said i'm not yeah. sure the specifics you were talking about but yeah. yeah anybody can be manipulated do the wrong thing like the other thing besides fear even greater than fear is the intention so we always try to keep whenever we're doing it as the group the intention is the hardest part to get on the same page we all have to have the same intention the target before you begin people that use the technique so many people I, I i there's a document that i produced that has step-by-step -step instructions on how to you have to go through and cleanse your body you have to do a metal cleanse there's things there's things you can take there's a there's a cocktail of things that help and in that step-by-step -step, people go out and do it they go through all this and they go man i got nothing and i go well what was your intention and they go well i didn't have an intention i just went in <laughs> And the intention is the whole reason, because if you get out there, you think about it, you get out there and you're speaking to high, both higher and lower entities and actually people in the future, you're going into the future and past. And so when you get out there and have a conversation with someone in the future, they go, why are you here? I go, oh, I'm just trying this out. Nothing's going to happen. You have to have an intention. Your intention is literally everything. You have to have a good intention. Or it doesn't have to necessarily be good. Um, you know, the, like I said, the government has bad intentions. They kill people with this. They have bad intentions, but your intention is how you get it done. And I make sure as our group that we have good intentions, that we only do things that are good. There's no, we all vote on it and we keep each other in check on it. everybody in the group has a say. I would never have a intention that would be pur uh, purposely harmful to anyone. And that's kind of like our prime directive with this, with the whole technique is that um, we don't, we set, we set positive intentions. They're going to be for the greater good. Um, and I would tell anybody to do that. That's the intention is your most, and you're in your day-to-day -day life. Your intentions are the most, when you wake up in the morning, you have to set an intention for the day, or it's going to just slip by and you're going to blink and you're going to be 80. So you have to have intentions are a key to life, man. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Tony, uh, for the last couple of minutes here. Um, plug your book tell us about your book and uh where people sure. can uh where people can find it and give us a little uh preview of what's going on in it i know you've already kind of uh, talked about it a little bit yeah series colony cavalier it's on amazon there's a kindle version this is the paperback i think it's like 480 pages yeah 470 something it's like 480 pages but i tell you it's it's a fast read. I'm shocked at how fast people read, right, blow right through it. A lot of people read it in a couple of days. They, it's gotten really great reviews. It's my story from start to finish. So it's the entire story. Um, there are things that I cut out because I, at the end, it, it's like a painting. Like you can just keep painting and never finish the thing. And I got to the point where I said, look, I got to finish this or I'm never going to. I need to get this book out. Or I'm never going to do it. I published it on the first of the year. Um and it did really well. It sold. It still sells, and um, it answers a lot of questions. I think the reason, the thing, and it, and I'm hoping that for people that read it, it causes them to ask questions. Like, wait a minute, it really? You know, like it, I chronicled a lot of things in there that people aren't really familiar with, and so there's things in there that I'm hoping 
spark your curiosity so that you like again so that this subject matter not just me my, not my story but this subject matter can be household information so it's on amazon <clears throat> it's also there's a link to it on my website and you can contact me my email on my website and i do consultations there's a memory course on my website and a link to my patreon show on my website tonyrodrigues.com and thanks yeah I, um writer you pronounced my name right uh, a lot of it's everybody says rodriguez and i don't mind that at all i'll take it but in actual the portuguese pronunciation with the s on the end it's called it's rodriguez that's what i've and been trying so to tell you people. caught that man that was cool that was pretty cool yeah yeah i've been trying to tell people that and they're like oh no they think that i'm just pronouncing it wrong and i'm like no that's how it's pronounced right it's, it's rodriguez the, the the offshoot from rodriguez with a z on the end so it, ha- it was always with a z in spanish but you know hundreds of years ago the offshoot with an s on the end was from king Roe's, and so he said rod riggs to kind of rhyme with his own name he 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 made his guy uh most people in his court all named rodriguez rod riggs rodriguez i almost mispronounced it again but that's where that came from and it's not it's a minor thing i don't really super don't care i've been called a lot worse than rodriguez let me tell you so i um it's fine but it's i appreciate it when people do figure it you know what I mean? Take the time and, and our thought. I do appreciate that. The people take, take the, make a note to, to pronounce it correctly. So that's, thank you. Well, I mean, it's your name, it's your name, brother. And, uh, you know, names are important. Names are important to get right. I, I think anyway, uh, plug your, uh, Patreon really quick, uh, for people, uh, so they know where to find sure. your videos. Yeah, there's a link on there. I got over 70 interviews. I got some of the big heavyweights in ufology that I've had on my show. Some that people may not have heard on that are amazing shows. So over 70 shows on there. There's tier two is a live Q and A every month. I do it. Tier three is the meditation group. I have a, only a few slots in there because I really don't want it full of trolls or people that have access to that information. It's very important. It's very powerful stuff. There's only like 30, 30 slots available. So they kind of come and go. And uh, tier one is only five bucks. And it really, it, the only reason for that is so that the videos don't get scrubbed or trolled. So there's 70 some videos and I, I, I film a couple a month and I've had people on there. I've had like absolutely some heavyweights in UFOlogy on the show. So it's great. So it's called Talks with Tony. It's, you know, www.patreon slash Talks with Tony. But again, it's on my website. You can get to it from my website, tonyrodriggs.com. And um, the Patreon show, it's really cool. Uh, you know, the other thing since I've done it, since Jackie stepped away because she's having a baby any minute, I've kind of taken over. And what I've done is taken uh, interviews that I've done with other people and put them up. Like my, the last one I posted was I did Jackie's live presentation at the last conference, the Secret Space Program Conference in Grafton, Illinois. And my live presentation is almost two hours. I was, they were gracious and shared that with me. And I posted that for the pa- patrons too. So they, if they missed the conference, and the live stream, which was expensive, like it's, it's included on the Patreon. So I'm so happy that Tyler um, did that, get, made that uh, from the Secret Space Program Conference, made that available for me. That was really gracious of him. So the, I put stuff like that on there and kind of updates. And I just, it's basically a, uh, I try to keep the shows just, you know, if the guest comes on and they have something relevant, but I try to keep an update because we're living through a disclosure. It's begun. The disclosure has already begun. We are living through disclosure right now. It's not a one-day event. It's going to be a five-year event, 10 years, who knows? But it began years ago, and we are living through it right now. So the show, I kind of chronicle things as I see it. I have a different view on a lot of things than people do because of what I went through. So that's kind of the basis of the show. It's just my opinion on on what I've seen. So thank you for letting me uh, plug all that. Yeah, no problem, Tony. I uh, really appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you coming on and uh, and speaking with me. I'm glad we could finally make it happen. Uh, I feel like you're a really you're a really good you're a really good dude, and uh, you have a really good head on your shoulders, my friend. And I appreciate you a lot. All of the uh, links to uh, Tony's information will be in the description of this video. I implore you to go over there and uh, check out his work. Uh, for everyone else. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. Much love to uh, everyone in the chat. Please be sure to hit the thumbs up button to help the show out in the YouTube algorithm. Share, subscribe, hit the bell icon as well for notifications. The link to my channel on Rockfan is in the description. Sign up over there. Hit the uh, 
subscribe button. And also you can catch this episode and any of my other episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and download them individually on Spreaker.com for free. Links are in the description. Again, thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate you a lot and coming on and uh, speaking with me today. Uh, Much gratitude to you. Thank you. Plant the seeds out there, everybody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And remember, we're not only in a spiritual war, but a war on humanity. Stay aware, stay alert, keep loving your heart for everyone. Stay safe out there. And remember, if you can see through the illusion, you are the solution. See you guys next time.